What's up guys, welcome to your 64th Java tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you guys how to add checkboxes to your GUI and yes it's going to be awesome so pay attention. So I already got my imports right there uh, if you want to copy those go ahead but I'm going to go ahead and minimize that right now so if you need to copy them pause your screen but if not see you later they're annoying me. So now I already made this class called GUI and it extends JFrame like before but I got rid of everything in the class. So now I can go ahead and start well pretty much making everything again. So in this program we're going to build three variables. One's going to be a text box with a sentence in it and we're going to have two checkboxes underneath. One that says bold and one that says italicize. And whenever we click click bold it's going to bold the text and whenever we click italics it's going to italicize the text so we need three private variables so we'll name private j text field and this is going to hold the text and we're going to name this tf for text field and we need uh, two more private j check box make sure I spelled it right don't want to spell it like the Czech Republic check box and we'll just name this like bold box because this one's going to be uh, the one in bold and private and it's going to be another checkbox why did I just not copy and paste that and this is going to be like italic box or something like that so now we have three variables that are going to hold the text field the bold box and the checkbox one's a text field two are checkboxes so now let's go ahead and well, I guess we can go ahead and build our constructor now. So public GUI and don't take any parameters, of course. And let's just go ahead and first thing, add a title, of course. Super, just put like the title. And the next thing we need layout, set layout. And we're um, just a future heads up. We're going to be actually going over how to make custom layouts in the in a couple of tutorials but for now we we'll just go with the default because you know works pretty good so new flow layout will give us the default layout and now we can go ahead and start adding stuff to the screen so that text field we want to set it equal to new j text field and as a parameters the first one is just right this is a sentence or something like that with a size of 20 and that pretty much gives us a text field in the tf variable and now let's just go ahead and we can do stuff to that text field now the first thing that we want to do is pretty much set a font to it so let's just go ahead and set a font like just make it actually do this too put new font there we go and as your parameters put serif and don't put anything else because java only accepts um, a couple weird ones so font uh, plain and plain means like not not bolded not italicized or anything in a size of 14 so that's how you set the font you set the font with new font method and it takes serif and make sure it's serif because I know for a fact that serif no matter what version of Java or what platform you run on it's gonna show up so make sure you do it serif just like that and now that we got a text box with it says this is a sentence we pretty much have all the text and now all we have to do is add it to the screen so add tf i mean it would be a waste if we created all that and we didn't even add it to the screen so now we got that text field right there now we can go ahead and make our two little check boxes to add the screen underneath it so let's go ahead and make bold box or whatever you named your variable and let's go ahead and set this equal to new j check box just like that and the parameters it takes Anytime you make a checkbox, there's going to be a little thing to the right hand side of it, or else you're not going to know what the heck it does. So it's like a little prompt to tell you what this text box does, or a checkbox does. I'm just going to say bold because, I mean, you don't need any more instructions than that. And let's go ahead and do the skin with the italic box. So copy this because we're lazy and paste it. And italic box, I think that's what I named it. Yep. And just put italics or italicize or something like that and now let's go ahead and add both of these to the screen add bold box to the screen and add let me scroll down a little bit there we go right there add italic box to the screen there we go 
So now we have pretty much three things on the screen, a text field and two checkboxes underneath it. The thing is, they're just chilling on the screen right now, not really doing anything. So what we need to do is add some functionality to it. So just like before, we're going to create a new class called handler class. And we're going to name the object handler and set it equal to new handler class. Just like that. And even though we didn't create that class yet, we're going to use it later on. So now let's go ahead and add um, an item listener for it. So bold, uh, what do we name? Bold box dot add item. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I did not mean to type that. Add item listener, and what are we gonna add? It takes an object as its parameter. So let's just add handler. So now let's do the same thing. Actually, copy and paste that. Save some time copy and paste now we can do the same thing right here with italics so this pretty much now that we have added an action or excuse me an item listener we have a listener waiting and what this does is pretty much waits for something to happen to bold box or italic box and the only thing that can happen is you can click it so now something's gonna happen and it's gonna wait to be clicked and when it gets clicked it's gonna recognize that it gets clicked so now that we are able to recognize when it gets clicked let's go ahead and make something happen when it gets clicked I mean you can recognize it so might as well so the first thing we need to do is create a private handler class so private whoa 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 not right there right here private I cannot type today handler class and implements did I spell that right item listener like that and you don't want and for our body of our class just like this actually in the next tutorial I'm gonna show you guys what goes in the body and it's pretty um, different than the last tutorial so you guys definitely want to pay attention to this but another thing that I want to point out before I forget whenever you put a class inside another class and if you're saying alright Bucky how come you just don't put this class outside right here and make two totally different classes how come you need an inner class to go inside this well if you put a class inside another class then this class this inner class it can see all of the variables and the methods in the outer class so if you were to make two separate classes either on the outside of this or in a totally different file then it's not going to be able to see the variables and methods and since we want to make this class use some of the methods and variables in here that's why we need to put this class inside the bigger class right here so that is why I put this handler class inside this GUI class or GUI class but again in the next tutorial I'm going to show you guys add some functionality to tell you guys when you click this checkbox, here's what happens. When you click the other one, here's what happens. When you click them both, here's what happens to the text. But for now, that's it for this tutorial. I'm running out of time, so thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.